That's a lot of nuts. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Rick. 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 Rick and Morty kind of sucks. Can we talk about that? With the allegations levied against Justin Roiland, that now means that both of the co-creators of the show have some sort of black mark on their record, and it has never been a more popular time to denounce being a Rick and Morty fan. It's very easy to jump on the bandwagon of simply hating the show, of admitting that your IQ is so high that not only did you understand Rick and Morty, but you understood that it kind of stopped being funny after season two. In fact, many people on Twitter have described this as the 9-11 for smoke shops, and I have to admit I've never felt less cool owning a Rick and Morty herb grinder and backwoods rolling tray. As much as you want to say it fell off, and I absolutely do think it did, the first two seasons were phenomenal. I probably look at them more highly than I should because it reminds me so much of my favorite animated show of all time, Futurama, but they share a lot of the same characteristics. The math and philosophy, the science fiction themes of a lot of the episodes, the grandoise existentialism of each individual character being put to the test by the ultimate nihilism that is the fact that the universe does not care about you. I think it's done very well. But where Futurama did an excellent job taking its expertise in philosophy and physics and science fiction and math and turning that into some sort of intergalactic satirization and perspective on modern society, it really felt like later episodes of Rick and Morty just used the intergalactic and science fiction themes as a backdrop to the 200th dick joke that they were making up on the spot while writing the script. I say all this in an effort to out my own biases as we talk about Dan Harmon and Justin Roiland. Though they may have been outed as not the greatest people in the world, I don't think that alone should be the reason that you should no longer support Rick and Morty. I think completely independent of whether or not Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon are bad people, that show stopped being funny after season two or three. You can feel free to disagree with me, but Futurama's better and we both know it. Where did all the controversy with the co-creators of Rick and Morty begin? I would argue it would begin at the beginning of Rick and Morty. In fact, even several years before the beginning of Rick and Morty. The birth of Rick and Morty is actually a story you probably know given the popularity of the show itself. A parody animation created by Justin Roiland around October of 2006. This animation is called Doc and Marty, just a little bit different than Rick and Morty, was originally created as a parody of Back to the Future. This is, of course, Marty McFly and Doc Brown. According to a note from Justin Roiland added after the fact, this animation was created as a way to poke fun at the idea of getting a cease and desist letter. When he originally came up with the idea of making this, he wanted to call it Back to the Future and just fill it with a whole bunch of troll shit and copyright infringement and terrible jokes as the characters of Back to the Future to try and get a cease and desist letter from Universal Studios just to troll a little bit, just to do a little bit of trolling. Justin Roiland then admits that as he's storyboarding these characters together and starts voicing them and breathing life into these satirizations of the two characters from Back to the Future, he starts to feel a bit of uh, whatever Geppetto felt when he brought Pinocchio to life. He started to feel a little bit of love and care. He started to appreciate the characters being brought into life before his eyes. And so as a result, and now with an emotional connection to these two characters, he dialed back a bit on the more risque and copyright infringing parts of this animation. He changed the name of the project from Back to the Future to Doc and Marty, a name similar enough to get the idea of the characters across, but just different enough to keep himself from getting sued, and then finish the project. Yes, Marty. It's the only way to fix our time travel car. You have to lick my balls, Marty. The saliva needs to be warm and fresh, and it must be administered by your tongue, Marty. But I don't understand how that would work, Doc. I, I don't, I don't, I'm confused. I don't- Marty, get... trust me. I hope you guys can now appreciate the irony of the idea that he actually toned down this video, because it still is essentially an unaired pilot of Rick and Morty where Morty gets his kite stuck in a tree, and for some reason the only solution is to suck and jerk off his grandpa. When this video initially surfaced, when this video initially came to light with the popularization of Rick and Morty airing on Adult Swim and Cartoon Network, it was, it was a little bit odd, 
but it wasn't nobody was getting canceled over this right everybody looked at this as a very funny a very crude a very unique insight into the creative process being able to see the voices that we all know so well the ridiculous over-the-top crude humor even some of the story plot lines in the original episodes of Rick and Morty in this pseudo pilot from God knows how many years before this show's conception was a very interesting insight into the creative process, into the mind of Justin Roiland, into the style of comedy that they do on Rick and Morty. This episode of Doc and Marty is far from a cancellation, right? But this would not be the only time that an old project from one of the co-creators would come up this would be the only time that it is looked back on fondly. I originally made it with Showtime uh, for their audience because it's a little groundbreaking for normal people to handle. But maybe you'll surprise me. Good luck. So in 2009, Dan Harmon gets an opportunity to submit some sort of pilot to HBO for a TV show idea. It's probably a big break for him because I don't think he had worked on anything super big before Rick and Morty. And so he decides to try and parody the wildly successful TV show Dexter. I don't know how this is a parody of Dexter, but he plays a character in this pilot episode who he describes as a baby rapist with a heart of gold. In this skit, Dan Harmon plays a therapist who prescribes to one of his patients a bunch of sleeping pills and a good night's sleep, who then takes the sleeping pills, allowing Dan Harmon to break in through his window and then bang his baby. Not a real baby. It's a baby doll, thank goodness. Still weird. And I don't mean to call this weird just because it's like, oh, it's, I mean, it is an old man banging a baby. Like, there's no comedy here whatsoever. But not even to be, like, overly sensitive. Like, I don't feel the need to defend myself. This is objectively not funny. The fact that he edited the cries of the baby to match his thrusting, like, what? It's so bad. It doesn't feel, like, I feel like calling it a parody of Dexter is unbelievably generous. This 100% looks feels and flows like an edgy 12 year old tried to make the most ridiculous YouTube video in early 2000s internet era to garner the attention of other internet trolls online. At one point, Dan Harmon narrating the situation states, while you were sleeping like a baby, I was doing anything but sleeping with your baby. Witty? Sure. Witty enough to justify having to stare at Dan Harmon's ass while he humps a baby doll? No, not that witty. The video proceeds on. For some reason, the father of the baby meets up with the therapist again, and he goes, I want you to keep doing this to bring me and my baby closer. Followed by a montage of Dan Harmon humping this baby doll until the final conclusion of this Dexter parody where the father is, for some reason, now closer with the baby and thanks the therapist for his work. Thank you. Believe me when I say it was my pleasure. Maybe I'm just not funny. Maybe I'm not cut out to be a comedy writer. Maybe I don't know what comedy is. Because if this is what funny is, I don't understand it. Dan Harmon has to apologize for this, right? This is one of the, this is the first thing that led people to want to cancel Rick and Morty, was discovering this about the past of Dan Harmon. On one hand, can you blame him? It was a decade ago. He wasn't super famous. The dude was probably trying to do anything he could to get the attention of anybody he could at HBO to give him a shot at doing some sort of comedy. But in the same vein, no part of this was creative or intellectual or like even... To, there wasn't even like a moment of this where it's like, oh, I could kind of see what he was going for here. This whole bit sucked. So Justin Roiland's in the news again. This is now the most up-to-date currently happening piece of controversy that's got to do with these two co-creators. He's currently been charged with domestic violence. I don't know the details of all of it because there's no reason for me to read up on it when Critical's already done a video on that situation. What I do want to touch on is while this is going on, there's also been some uncovering of a bunch of underage fans talking about times where Justin Roiland messaged them on Twitter and had direct message conversations specifically with girls under the age of 18. Now, there's a lot of examples of this. There's several people coming forward with these messages. I don't know to the extent of the illegality, whether or not there were photos or anything, you know, NSFW exchange between Justin Roiland and these individuals. What I can say for sure 
is this guy has zero riz. He asks this one fan what time it is, and she goes, I don't know, like 11.30, and he responds, oh, oh, so, so right. Oh, it's so right, and me so Chinese. You can't get mad at me for doing this impression because I'm just reading what he wrote, okay? If you're, if you're upset with my accent, you have to be upset at him indirectly. I have nothing to do with this. I'm animating this text message for your benefit. Bad Chinese accents aside, like, what is this? You're, you're messaging an underage fan that you reached out to. You're not pitching, you're not like talking to a 60 year old comedy writer trying to, you know, reminisce about the olden days when you could make jokes that would get you canceled now. What, what is this nonsense? She goes, I have school tomorrow, sad face. You know, like a 16 year old would. At which point Royland goes, oh no, school tomorrow? Still, like she doesn't even acknowledge the Chinese accent joke that he's doing. But he's like, no, no, no. She just doesn't get it yet. I'm going to keep rolling with this. The next line's got some weirdly unnecessary vulgarity to it, but one reoccurring thing in a lot of the messages that Justin Roiland has been sending to this fans has been something about going into sex slavery or start cam whoring online. Like he continually makes these offhanded jokes that are like, you should become a cam whore. You should go into sex slavery. Like just sort of like beating around the bush. Oh, oh geez, hello. Oh, I shouldn't be in your voicemails. Ah, you're, you're just a kid. Oh, I'm in your voicemails. Oh. I don't think any of these messages have been brought up in his current lawsuit. Like, it could be true that all of these are fake. But there's several people coming forward. And again, I'm not bringing this up to talk about, like, necessarily the controversies of the fact that more people should be holding him accountable. Again, it's the zero Riz thing. Uh, G Morty. Uh, G Morty. Why, why are you such jailbait, Morty? Oh my god, what's what's wrong with you, Morty? What's wrong with you in that regard? You sh you should grow older, Morty. <clears throat> you dumb bitch. Oh gee, Rick. Rick, I don't know. I don't know if it's cool being jailbait, Rick. I don't know. I th I think the FBI is following me around, Rick. I I think they're arresting all the men that I sleep with, Rick. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard being jailbait, Rick. Shout out to the Patreon boys scrolling in the back. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you leave a like or subscribe, you'll get more of me in your inbox, and that would be truly appreciated. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Shpisu.